Hi everyone, welcome to Digital Vidya's webinar. My name is Divya Mahajan and the topic for today's webinar is Surviving Google SEO in 2016. For this we have Karannam Srikant. He is highly successful as a digital marketing manager for large Fortune 500 clients in banking and financial industries. He is developing and in developing and deploying managing dig digital sales and acquisition programs that generate revenue and increases brand penetrations. He also has exceptional technical abilities and is able to create and execute campaigns that include SEO, link building, pay-per-click management, social media, Google Analytics, landing page and much more. So he'll be leading the webinar today. Welcome Srikant. I'll just hand over the session to you and you can take the session forward. All right, thank you Divya. So, hey everyone, uh, just let me know, raise your hands if you can hear me, so that I can, I'll know if, uh, you know, if people are able to listen to my voice. All you have to do is raise your hands once. Okay. Right, let's start this. Okay, my name is Srikant, and uh, today's webinar is all about surviving Google in 2016 and going forward and uh, before I go ahead and uh, start the webinar I need to uh, I want to introduce myself first and uh, I am Srikant and I'm head of digital marketing for Spectraforce Technologies which is in Gachipoli and I'm also a found, uh, founder of mgaw.in which is a agency website where we provide digital marketing services for uh, small and medium businesses and uh, MGAW actually stands for Marketing Genius at Work and I'm also founder of my own personal website Digital Srikant where uh, you know, all these webinars and uh, uh, posts um, and, and uh, anything new about digital marketing will be written in that uh, website. I've been working as uh, in digital marketing for the past nine years. I started first as, as a SEO then I moved on to SEM. Later I got a chance to work on social media and this is all actual experience things that I've worked on in the last nine years and uh, I probably have already crossed 500 but I actually don't know the exact number so I've, I would have conducted more than 500 audits for websites uh, looking at uh, the structure of the website, the design of the website, the, the you know, on sites, everything starting from a design to delivering the traffic. We do all sorts of uh, audits and in the last uh, last four or five years I would have done more than 500 audits and I've managed more than 500 plus clients in the last nine years. And I'm also a lead digital marketing consultant for Marcy Enterprises Australia and uh, they provide uh, you know, digital marketing services for small and medium businesses in Australia. I've also trained SEO teams in three different continents, one being Australia, the other one being UK and uh, the third one being India. I have a team of more than 10 people in the, in the present company and I'm also a YouTuber. We do trick shots. My first channel is Kalo Dilse where we do uh, trick shots. You can see it. Just Google it, Kalo Dilse and you'll see our video. And the second one is Distal Srikant where I vlog on a daily basis. I'm actually not doing now numbers. So as of now I'm not doing it, but very soon I'm starting. I'm also a Manchester City fan for life. I've been watching their matches I don't know for how long. So before actually go into uh, the actual webinar, this is about me and uh, a bit of housekeeping guys. Uh, it'll be a one hour webinar. I'll try to keep it interesting till the end so that you people don't get bored. And uh, yeah, the Q&A will be after the webinar. You can ask in the, in the message box and I'll try to answer as many questions as possible. And uh, if you can't listen to the audio, please type in the message box so that we can, we can do some adjustments. Just, uh, which is why I was asking uh, if you people can hear my voice, just raise the hand so that you know, I'll come to know that my audio is clear. And uh, uh, the next one being the most important uh, housekeeping. If you are a SEO, then you'll be a little disappointed, but you'll have a different perspective about SEO going forward in 2016 and beyond 2016. And if you are a business owner or a blogger or an entrepreneur and, and looking for increasing traffic, then you are in the right place at the right time because it's just starting now. And, and uh, having this information is going to give you a different idea on what needs to be done to get more traffic from Google. And uh, 
yeah, if you are a newbie trying to understand uh, what SEO or digital marketing is, then you will have to just listen till the end and may have to listen twice or thrice to understand entire information that I'm going to give you in this webinar. And uh, fortunately, the recording will be available and it will be, uh, I think, yes, a link will be sent to you which you can go through it again and again to understand what I'm going to tell you. Because uh, if you're a newbie, you're, you're going to uh, go listen to the 17 years of work that Google has uh, you know, invested and, and I'm going to give you uh, all that information in, in one hour. It will be a bit hard for, for a you know, fresher or a newbie to understand all the information at once, but you will get there. You don't have to worry about that. This is how Google looked when I started SEO. There were no ads, nothing. Plain Google website with 10 results. You search for something and you would get results. These were organic results, results that were from a different website. And these were the good old days where we had to fight only for the top 10 rankings. This was our job uh, 10 years ago. This was our job. All we had to do was, in order to satisfy our clients, all we had to do was fight for top 10 results. And this was our promise to all our clients, whoever was coming on board. The 100% real estate on this page was organic. Search engine result pages con contained and showed only organic results. Then, a couple of years later, Google started showing universal search, which means it started providing organic listings, paid results, and specialized results such as video, maps, images, now for a query that, that a user was searching for. This was uni universal search, which actually started in 2007. Then, a couple of years later, they started showing vertical search, which means for a query that, that a user searches, it will be a different content for each query, which means it will be an amalgamation of images, videos, news, and shops, maps, YouTube videos. This was called as vertical result, different sets of information being shown in the same page. Now. Once vertical search came into effect, everything changed, and this came in 2010. It is it is it's been a, a ongoing work for the past six years, and it is still ongoing. It will take a lot of time for them to figure out, and it will take years for us to figure out how how they are going to, you know, show so much of information in one single page. And you're going to see what what are the changes that have happened in the last 15 years, you know. And welcome to 2016 search engine result pages. There were a lot of enhancements that happened in uh, Google, and the first one that never changed was the organic search result. This was how, uh, you know, when you search for a keyword, you would get a result, which is an organic search result. Then they started showing different information, which was organic with the added date, because Previously, if you had an article for a longer period of time, then it would rank higher. Google changed it after a certain time, saying that, okay, you are going to get fresh content. So you can choose based on dates. That's when they started showing date add-on. Then they move forward and start showing virtual path, which means, if you can see it here, they started showing not the URLs. In the above second result, you can see digital with their digital marketing courses 297. But here, in the third result, we can see a virtual path, which means Zomato, the, uh, the breadcrumb being India, they started showing Mumbai, South Mumbai, and Fort. That's how they started showing breadcrumbs directly in the result pages. Then the full site links came into effect. You not only can visit their homepage, you can also visit their other pages, which are part of important pages or in their header of the website. Or later, they gave an option of choosing which links can be shown in in the result pages. A webmaster tools, you can choose which site links can be displayed. And then, organic site, you know, organic results with search results. This is one of the popular websites in Andhra, idlebrain.com, and you can directly search the information that you want directly from the search you know, bar which is given in the organic result, which means a user doesn't even have to visit the website for the information that he's looking for. They can directly search here and Google will direct, if, if it has, if it has indexed in its database, then it will directly show the result to the user, which means very few pages traveled by the user. 
if you understand or, or let me explain it in a clear way why Google did all is doing all this they are trying to give more information in less time to the user so that they stay on the page for a longer period of time the whole point of SEO was also the same the bounce rate if it's less it's good for the website the same thing applies to Google the more the user stays on on, on, the, on Google the better it is for them the more user engages the better it is for them the better user value and, and they can they can earn more money which is the reason why they started showing as much information as possible and giving as much information as possible so the user doesn't leave their website which is Google then they started showing organic re you know, results with review stars Starbucks coffee and you'll come to know now what is the rating of the uh, restaurant that you're going to visit you know, directly within there. Previously you had to visit the website and then there you can see the aggregator. We don't know whether it's going to work or not. So you had to you know, surf a lot of pages in order to see whether the rating is good or not. But Google changed it all together. They started showing the reviews, the ratings, the number of votes that the website has and the price range for, you know, for approximately two people. All this information is enough for a person to make a decision of whether to go to that website or whether to go to that coffee shop or not. Which means they stopped a user from going to Zomato.com website by taking their information. I hope you guys are following me. All right, then they started showing video thumbnails. You know, this was something a part of Universal Search and uh, you know, along with other uh, organic results they also mixed thumbnails then the recipe thumbnails which was very popular when, when it when it was launched you know you search for a, a recipe and they start showing the ratings the votes you know how long will it uh, take when was it actually uh, you know uh, launched and then the image of the <laughs> recipe actually you know I'm a Hyderabadi so I just thought I'll put Hyderabadi Dam Biryani so then they started showing knowledge snippets this is where things went you know complicated. If you search for biryani, they took information from a different page and showed you a part of it. Which means if you were looking for a meaning of, of, of a word or, or, or of a sentence, they actually showed you. Which means we don't really have to visit that website to know more information about it. Unless you need more information, you only visit that. If not, this information is enough for a user to go back and search for a different keyword or a, a different word. Then they took it forward and they started showing organic results with review stars which means this is for Meta events guys we can also see what events are happening in the city and what are the ratings for those you now events that are going to happen if they have happened previously those ratings were also shown in the results pages then the vertical results this is where things are really really good in they started showing image results, then they started showing news results. And if you search for any keyword, I think most of the people might be knowing this. Image results are part of the organic you know, uh, results. News results were shown. Google Places results were started showing in the, in the year 2012, I believe. Then in-depth articles were also shown. If you actually click on the news results, then you can it will take you to the in-depth articles. Then recently Google started showing Twitter results as well which means if you search for a person if they have the latest tweets if they're active on Twitter they started showing their tweets as well which is really really awesome then they started showing local results the local pack which is you know if you search for a venue you know a hotel which is near your area it will all show it then it will show results with directions it starts showing them and local pack knowledge panels which is if I search for this restaurant is very near to my house so I thought I'll you know uh, take it so it, it starts showing where it is what is the rating what time it is open what is the phone number and what are the reviews all this information to the right hand side of the page it starts showing the local pack knowledge panel then before if you had seen the actual real estate hundred percent of the real estate was organic results but once Google started giving enhancements of the hundred percent sixteen percent was taken over by enhancements then the verticals came in 
इमेज रिजल्ट वीडियो थम मेल्स रेसिपीज ऑल टूगेदर दे टूक फोर्टी सेवन पर्सन ऑफ द रियल एस्टेट लोकल विच इज द स्नैक पैक्स एंड द यू नो नॉलेज क्राफ्ट टू पर्सन वॉज गिवेंट टू दैम एंड आफ्टर दीज थ्री केम टू एफेक्ट only 35% of the real estate was actually organic which means of the 10 results that were shown in 2000 in 2016 35% which is 3.5 to 4 results were actually organic and rest of them are a mix of enhancements verticals local all three together so if you are a seo i was a seo once a couple of years uh, years ago we were fighting for 10 positions right now we're only fighting for 3.54 results max organic then we actually only discussed about enhancements vertical and local we missed out a very big part of the google ecosystem which is ads and shopping ads started showing on top and bottom this i think you know if people have seen it then ads started showing with extensions which is you know the links that are the popular links of the website then they started showing right column ads which are eight of them now page shopping left column ads on top you can see them if you if you search for a keyword if they are you know viable and if they are available in any of the websites they directly start showing you know on top which means the organic results started going down down and down now apart from the shopping left column they also started showing right column ads as if the space that was already occupied on to the left hand side was not enough they started showing eight results to the right hand side other than the ads that were shown on the left hand side which is the organic part then ads and shopping watch now ads i think i hope uh, i think people maybe if you haven't seen it if you have seen it or not i hope you people have seen it because these started showing you can do it now go to google.com search for gangs of wasepo and you'll be able to see this youtube you can see it on youtube for dollar 2.99 and you can see it on amazon you can see it on google play for 2.99 dollars which means this was once a knowledge pack but right now they have included ads they have included ads here and they are selling it for 2.99 cents then they started showing book a room ads you are trying to travel and they start showing ads wherein if you particularly specifically search for a hotel in their website you know they have even given us option to check in and check out choose a date directly book there and go go forward no middleman google has taken over the you know reservation part of the hotels then then they started showing flight booking ads you can directly go into google search for flights from hyderabad to goa and they show all the available flights whether they are non stop or connecting or everything this is a sponsored result in the organic results you can directly book flights from here by choosing the day clicking on on the links and go and register now previously there were enhancements verticals local now one more thing has added ads and shopping enhancements took 16% offer verticals took around 47% offer local took 2% then ads took 15% offer what is left for search results which is organic only 20% offer which means a couple of years ago we were fighting for 10 results or 10 positions they trimmed it down to 3.5 with ads and shopping they trimmed it down to 2 the organic results that seo fights for is actually 2% only two positions the rest of them are um, are are a mixture of enhancements verticals local ads and shopping they didn't stop there if they had stopped there it would have been very very good they didn't just they didn't stop there they kept going forward try to you now make use of the real estate that they had which is the google.com page or do google.co.in page they introduced knowledge graph which actually is kind of revenge 
on all the you know uh, website owners and people who are trying to make money from from SEO knowledge cards this this they introduced this now if you people are I, I think you people are already in front of the system just open google.com or google.co.in and search for Charminar height it directly shows you 56 meters this is a direct answer and where, where is this information being taken from they are taking it from the encyclopedia page or Wikipedia page which is 56 meters you know and it's ecosystem which takes all the information that is available and shows it in a way that the user wants to see. The question was how tall is Charminar? And it's a very simple answer, 56 meters. The user doesn't have to read all the information the Charminar, you, if you see on the right hand side, the Charminar constructed in 1591C, they removed all of it. Straight question and a straight answer. That's the ecosystem, that's the revenge of knowledge graph. You know, it had endless answers. I just typed in who built Taj Mahal and it showed me the two architects who have actually built it. And where did it take that information from? It took it from Wikipedia. Now, they also started showing feature snippets, which is if there are, I asked for the top highest what falls in India and it started showing me all the results. This is the actual result from the result below. If you, if you see it, th these, two, these two are the same results. It's just that they're showing me a part of the result so that I don't actually have to go and read the rest of the information. They're only showing me the information I have asked. That's knowledge graph. Eliminating all the unnecessary information which a user used to read a couple of years ago. Now, how did Google build this data? They built it on what we gave them. Wikipedia was user generated. This was built by us and Google started using it. We gave it to them to build these knowledge graphs. Now, all I had to do was how to lose weight and they started showing me the you know, six steps that you need to do in order to lose weight along with the image result. Now, this is the first result of the organic page or the search engine result page. The, the next one is the second result is actually the organic result which is counted as first result. So, Technically, Google still says that this is the, 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 how the this page is still the first result, but actually this was supposed to be the first result a couple of years ago, for which thousands of people, thousands of business owners were fighting. But right now, they have eliminated it by ex actually showing the exact information to the user that they are searching. Now, had they not shown this information, the user who has searched for this keyword would have actually clicked on the link below and he would have gone to that website. By showing this information right on the results page, they have reduced one page surfing, which means they have retained the user for at least 10 or 15 seconds, which is the average you know, user time that a visitor sends, spends on one page. So 15 seconds spent more on Google is, is pure profit for them. Now, they also started thinking what kind of questions people might ask. I just asked when is Diwali, I didn't even say which month, what is this, no. They took it from the most popular result and they actually, you can see it here, bold, it's in bold. They showed me the, the result in bold. So the rest of the paragraph is in normal, you know, without bold and the actual question that I asked, the answer was in bold. I don't know how they did that, which is where the knowledge graph ecosystem came into effect. The answer that I was looking for popped right into my no eyes. It's there in bold. Read it. If you want more, click on the link. Go in. If you don't want, you don't really have to go there. That's what knowledge graph is. Now, believe me, guys, it's just beginning. Go to SEO. Sorry, go to Google and search for SEO. Along with the results, it will also show you this, which says people are also ask for what is search engine optimization, what is Google SEO, and it will show you a couple more questions which means previously this was being shown as people also search for at the bottom of the page. Now they have, they are also showing it there but they have mixed it along with search results. This was part of the search result. The fourth or the fifth result was this. They were suggesting the user to search for more keywords. Maybe the, it, it was too broad so they thought okay 
maybe this guy doesn't know what to search for. Let us give him some more information, some more keywords to search for. Then, now, once they started doing this, once they, once they brought knowledge graph into the organic results, 16% already we knew this, enhancements, 47 went to verticals, local 2%, paid 15% they took it off, and 17% real estate was occupied by knowledge graphs. What is left? For organic results, only 3% of it. Today an SEO, I am an SEO. Yes, I say I'm a digital marketer, but still, by nature, my first job, the one that I loved, the one that actually gave me this life, was SEO. And if I am still an SEO, I will be fighting for maybe one or two results. I don't think 3% qualifies for even one result. If Google shows 10 results in one page, which is 10%, 3% doesn't even qualify for one result, which means hundreds of websites are fighting for one result. If you are an SEO, your effort that you are putting in is only for 3% of the real estate that Google has. The rest of the information, the rest of the effort and the rest of the real estate is divided into enhancements, verticals, local, paid and knowledge. Now, I still see in India many websites and many business owners still trying to get traffic only through organic results. Yes, I, I understand it's free traffic, but you're only getting 3% of the traffic. You're missing out on the 97% of the traffic if you don't know how to use how to how to use the rest of the you know divisions that have happened. Now, this this was what I was uh, was running in my mind, so I just wanted to ask the same thing. You know, my question was you know that was running in my mind was are answers being driven by mobile because you know. When I searched for SEO, I got the same answer. I, I, I searched there for SEO and what is SEO, I'm still getting the same answer. You know, if Google has done this for many, many niches, I don't know which niche is, is the, you know, uh, they, they are leaving it. If there is a niche that is popular, they are just taking the information from those pages because we have given them the authority to crawl our pages. We ask them, we submit our, you know, uh, URLs, we submit our uh, XML sitemaps, we submit our robots.txt, we tell Google when to come and crawl our pages. So we are giving them authority to come and crawl our web pages, take the information and they took all of it for the last 17 years, figured it out what the user might ask and they started showing that. Now the question is which niche are, are they you know, leaving? I don't think they are leaving any any niche. They've already captured flight reservations, hotel reservations, movie tickets. You know, then they've captured already songs, the music industry. They've already you know captured the shopping industry. I don't know which which you know in, in, uh, niche they've you know left. I, I, as I said in the, in my first slide, I'm a big fan of Manchester City. You know, if I want to know the score previously, this is in the year 2012. True story, guys. If I want to know the inf you know a score, uh, I had to actually go to PremierLeague.com, which is the actual website where the you know uh, the score is updated on a minute basis. Right? Google changed it. I now directly go into my mobile and I type Manchester City score and I get all the scores. Not only the, 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 the current one, they also show me the last two or three results. With a drop down, if I click on it, I see the last 15 or 20 results, 20 matches. I don't even have to go, go to PremierLeague.com to know about the rest of the matches. I have it right in front of me. Imagine, Manchester City has 80 million viewers. I'm saying online. Everyone would have used to go to ManchesterCity.com website, mcfc.co.uk. After this came into effect, I don't think they, have, they, they will be getting the same amount of visitors. Because it's easy, all you have to do is press on one app and, and you know, Google uh, Voice and, it, and this opens. Actually, this is Google Nav, not even Voice. This is Google Nav, which is by default on my screen. All I have to do is just click on it. This is, I'm not even doing that. I've even gone forward. Google has taken me a bit forward. Now, this is where the, the rise of the Google Content King comes into effect. Now, they have started giving us definitive answers. All I had to ask was 
when is Republic Day? I don't even have to remember the you know, answers these days. Whatever it is, I just go into you know, uh, Google and I search. When is Republic Day? What day it is? January 26th, Republic Day 2016. The correct answer for the correct question. Definitive answers. So once I know the answer, is there a need for me to go through the rest of the 10 results, whether it's 10, whether it's 1, whether it's 20? Will I even bother? Will I even look at the other results? Because I got what I wanted. That's where Google Content King came into effect. Now, they even started segregating popular entities. I don't know if you people know this or not. Thrift Shop, this is a, a, a individual uh, song that was released in the year 2012 by an artist Michael Moore and uh, it, was a, it, it is a very popular song. So I just went and just tried it in Google and I actually wanted to search it in YouTube, just accidentally clicked it. I got a huge thumbnail. This is the single result, no organic result. This is the first result. I haven't photoshopped it, no changes. You can see on top about, I don't know how many crores of results no organic result you can see it here direct thrift shop you can see the video thumbnail because they understood that if someone is searching for thrift shop it means a video so there is no point in showing the user a video thumb you know a link or any other web pages this directly are taking you to the youtube page where you can directly see the video so they are eliminating the mediators they directly try to understand what the question is or what the query is they're giving the answers which was still there previously but it was in the form of a curator which means the content was created by the website owners and if it meets the Google quality guidelines they used to you know show it in the search engine result pages in the form of organic results but right now that's eliminated they're taking the query and they're showing the result not the website they're directly showing the result where they get the answer if it's a question you will get answer. If it's a you know, video, you'll get the video. And if it's a match score that you want to see, you'll get it. All I had to do was real Madrid score. You can even you know you can know the score. You can also, if you want, see the video highlights. But this is heights of you know uh, results. Now they're also showing you the club information, the current manager. The, uh, this is latest guys. You can see it here. I took this on Monday, 4th January. I was watching the match, the power went out after it came, I just searched it. And this is just hours after the match. Now, they also started giving competitive tools. You know, if you go, go into Google and search for calculator, you'll be able to you know, do the math right then and there. Now, they, if, you, if you go into, this, is, this, this happened yesterday, guys. If you're looking at this, I was, I wanted to go to the movie, you know, Killing Virapan, which actually released yesterday. And this, I took it the day before. This screenshot that I took, I took it day before. And you can see it here. I wanted to book tickets. I wanted to know in which theaters it was releasing. All I did was go into Google and search for Killing Virapan. It showed me. I didn't even say Killing Virapan theaters in Hyderabad. Nothing. I just typed in the, the, the keyword, Killing Virapan, which is the movie name. And it figured out that I am in Hyderabad, I am in Banjara Hills, and these are the theaters which are near to me. It showed me everything. And it, it not only showed me one day you know, uh, uh, shows, it showed me today, tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday, the next four days. Now, is there, any, is there any reason why I had to go to any other website once I know it directly from Google? No, I won't. This is what content you know, work they have done in the last 15 years. Now, as a you know SEO, we try to figure out what algorithm might do when when it might change. But it's Google is more than an algorithm. They they have world's smartest people who are building algorithms on a daily basis, and which is why smart algorithms led to smart data curation, which means they were curators once. They used to, as SEOs, we used to you know create content, optimize for the content, optimize for the keywords. Google used to crawl our web pages and rank us accordingly. That was curation, you know. They used to judge, you know, a web page based on the page rank, 
based on the content, based on the keywords, based on the page authority, based on the link, you know, depth, link value, a lot of ranking factors came into effect. They eliminated all of it. They changed their way of doing things. They became creators. Rather than being curators, they changed to creators. Trying to capture every niche. Believe me, if you if you go to directgoogle.com and if you search for auto insurance, they'll give you the a calculator where you can calculate the you know, monthly installment right then and there. They don't, you don't even have to go to the website. If once you're calculated, you get a buy now button there. Which means you are completing the transaction directly from Google. Now, I don't know which niche, niche they are they are going to you know capture. But this is what happened. I, I just wanted to go to uh, Bangalore. I, I directly in Google I tried Hyderabad to Bangalore and see this. I got the sponsored result, which is Google.co.in flights. This is not a sponsored result from any other company. This is directly from Google. Now. How are we going to, you know, take over this? Because they they are trying to capture everything. Then I figured out the only way we can beat, or the only way we can still, you know, beat and rank better is if we build deep content. Just go into Google and search for Google algorithm change history. You can, you, the first result that you will get is Moz instead of Google. It's actually Google algorithm change history that we are looking for. So the first result that should come up is Google. Most, because they have maintained these updates for the last six, maybe seven years, they are maintaining this position by beating Google. Deep content. The only way we can rank better, stay there, and outrank others, outrank millions of competitors, may not be in India, may be all over the world, is if we start building deep content, which is a bit, not bit, very hard, but it's achievable. And along with deep content, if we give our you know, insights, and if we give value to the user that is coming and reading, because he's taking his time, he's going through Google, which is trying to give him so much information before he even chooses to you know, come to our website. They're already giving so much information. There must be something more valuable than what already Google is giving. What can that be? That, that needs to be figured out. If we can figure out what else can we give, what value can we add? Is it in the form of a you know, pie chart which Google can't you know, give? Is it in the form of you know, a, a report that they can download? Or is it in the form of a mixture of reports as well as insights like you can see it here internet users in India this is actually I, I searched it for a different reason but it did catch my attention you know, straight away when I entered this they showed me what I wanted you know you can see in the title internet users in India 354 million I wanted to check whether it's correct or not the moment I enter it in, in, in the page I, I see a graphic clear now I'm, I'm done I know what I need but still because they have given me valuable information right away without wasting any time, I, I thought of giving it a shot and, and you know, looking deeper because it said in brackets, in bold, in capitals, a report. It didn't say post, it said report. So there is more to it. So I, I stuck with the you know, uh, article, I read more and more. That's where we need to give our value and insight. We need to bring our A plus game to our users that are coming to our website. If you go to crickinfo.com, you know, even today nobody can beat crickinfo because they have maintained the deep content throughout the last 16 years. You know, they have player info, they have scores, they have their statistics, they have their you know commentary, they have scorecards, they have a lot of deeply linked content with one another which passes a lot of link juice and passes a lot of authority. Even if its authority is dead as of today, you know, it doesn't have any value, but still, indirectly, it still counts. So if we are, if we are trying to you know, rank well in search engines, if we are trying to do SEO for our clients' websites, or maybe it's your own website, figure out a way where you can build deep content and give more value on inside rather than writing a generic content rather than giving them generic information which they can you know, get it directly from Google by doing a search. We have to get past that. 
That's what Google is doing. They're not asking, you know, they're not penalizing websites anymore. They did that already. They have done it many a times, but still, you know, webmasters figure out a way to outbeat them. So they said, okay, let's do something. Let's create our own content. We have been curators for long. Let's change the game and become creators. Sorry. Yeah. Now, how did they you know, do it and why did they do it? They did it because they wanted to capture that mobile market. It all came from the mobile search engine result pages. You know, let's talk about mobile get on. In 2014, on 22nd April, they released mobile get on, an update where, you know, if your site is not mobile friendly, then it will not rank better. That's what they said at first, but it was not that actually. They were releasing algorithms wherein more, in, you know, uh, Weightage were given to mobile users. They released carousels. They released snack packs. We're going to go, go into that. You can, please keep a note of this. 22nd April, you can see the red dot, right? That's where things changed. And they actually got what they wanted. Six days later, you can see the mobile usage. It, it, it went from, you know, you can see it here. It was 60, 62%. From there, to it went directly to 80% almost. You know, mobile indexing was way too much, all of a sudden, in a, in a matter of six to eight days. And if, if we come to India, as of today, over 60% of internet users in India access internet via their phones now. Yeah, I do that. Maybe if you're listening to this, you would be, you, you would be having a smartphone now. And, and it clearly said that 345 million users were already there who are using internet, of which, as of 2015, 230 million people are using mobile internet, which Google figured it out a couple of years ago. And they started giving more prominence to mobile users. Now, how did they you know, uh, do it and why did they do it? This is where it came. In 2014, John Bailey released a you know, Google Plus post, wherein they said that you know, towards the end of last year, we launched some pretty big design improvements for search on mobile and tablet devices, which said clearly mobile first. Today we have carried over several of the changes to the desktop experience, which means they designed their entire search engine result pages for mobile and they made it available for desktop. So it was desktop pre, you know, uh, before, now it is mobile first and they took the same design, made it bigger, broader and better and, and pushed it to desktop. That's what they did and that's what he clearly said. Now you, you remember the desktop carousel, right? You, know, you can see it on top here. If I search for ARM and songs, it directly showing me a strip of results which are the most popular songs of ARM. It is showing in in horizontal way, but if you look at it in, you know, in in my mobile, it, it will show it, show show it like this, because it was actually created for mobile. Carousels were created for mobile. Now. If you look at the snack pack, which is I search for burger and it shows me all the you know, restaurants that are there in uh, nearby to my place. These were actually designed for mobile. No? They, they kept mobile you know, in, in their minds and they started creating content accordingly. They started showing results accordingly. Remember this one where you can directly book flights? This was also actually created for mobile. See, this is, this is directly from my mobile. I took a snapshot directly from my mobile and, and just kept it here. Yeah? Because it, it was, it's fascinating for the users. You know? it, it is dominating on mobile. It looks awesome. It looks beautiful. And it, 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 you know, I don't even have to sit in front of the chair. I can do it on, on, on the go, wherever I am, which is what they figured it out. And then they started giving more importance. Now. If you really want to match up with Google, you really have to test your site and run, run your numbers. Make sure that you are using their free tool, which is Mobile Friendly Test. Uh, just type it here, Google Mobile Friendly Test in Google, and you'll go to this page. All you have to do is give you a URL and analyze it. See if your website is mobile friendly or not. If it is not, then Google is not giving you importance because you are not mobile first. You are desktop first. So if, if we are trying to match up with Google and, and if we are trying to optimize for a search engine, which is Google, 
not organic. We are trying to optimize. We are SEO. SEO is search engine optimization. We are optimizing for search engines. As of now, Google says mobile is the biggest search engine because it's, it's in the power. It's in your power. We have to optimize for that. So make sure that you are getting your site ready and your numbers are good and your website loads faster and its CSS is pretty good and, the, and everything looks better. Perfect. So, okay, now, they didn't leave it here. They want to monetize that mobile first experience. They built the ecosystem for the mobile so that they can give different types of ads apart from the ads that are already being shown in the desktop. They want to capture that mobile space as well. The, the very tiny 5.1 inch or 5 inch or maybe 4, 4 inch phones, they want to capture you know, that real estate as well by showing different types of hybrid ads. Now what are these hybrid ads? And you can see paid online movies, which I already showed you on desktop. The same result can be seen on your mobile. They're actually trying to, you know, which is pretty easy. You can see it on your mobile. YouTube can be accessed. Amazon Video can be accessed. Google Play is like, you know, it can be accessed. Now, paid hotel bookings, they've already launched it. Now, this ad, it directly shows in your mobile and you can directly book it from there. They wanted to capture that real estate. Now, here, this has not yet happened in India. You know, I searched for Tamasha songs like, I, and they, they have given me the songs, you know, links. You can see it here, but in a couple of months, remember this, in a couple of months you'll be able to see some other the website trying to sell these songs. Because it's already happening in US, it's already happening in UK. It's, it's yet to come here. It's, it is going to come, because if it has come to YouTube, if, if it has come to you know, books, it will come to songs as well. And moving forward, the spice jet, if you, you know the, the flight bookings. I search for spice jet because it's the cheapest one. And you, you see the second result. Before the first ten results were actually the organic results. You can see it here. The first result is an ad which is from Google AdWords. The second result is also from Google AdWords. The first two, which are supposed to be organic, are now paid. You can directly book here. You know, from Hyderabad, where do you want to go? Enter your destination. You can directly book it here. The organic results are going down and down and down, day by day. Why did they do it? They have built a commercial ecosystem. They want to capture this, you know, mobile space. It just, I just did a job search, you know. This was just an example and I can see that, uh, ads and apps. All of them are actually paid. Why? Because they can show up to six app app results in one single you know, result, which is why they wanted to capture that mobile space. App packs can actually replace up to six organic spots. If you have a 5.1 inch mobile, you, you know you can see six results, which are apps actually, where they can make more money by showing more ads in the apps. Now, if you want to see the future of ads, make sure that you're looking into mobile first. I just did an AC repair and they're giving me ads, quicker free classifieds, you know, their, their ad and their app which I can install. You know, the, the other result is from Sulika where I can directly call or I can see the number. I don't even have to go to the website. That every information I want is right in front of me. They are trying to monetize each and every result. Where is the organic part of it? Now, this is what I think is going to be, you know, I, I just doubt it. This is how I think they are trying to do it, or they might do it, might not. I you know search for Star Wars in a couple of years, and you might see this you know toys that are related to Star Wars on top on the, on the left hand side, and to the right hand side you, you will get all the information which is a knowledge panel. Just below that you'll be able to see the you know Star Wars is a seven movie you know uh, cinema. So you can you can see uh, the previous episodes as well on YouTube or maybe iTunes or Amazon and below that where, where exact you know the actual uh, organic results you can see the organic result as well as any other normal ads you know the show times where there is running so everything is paid here can you see a, a organic result this is just an example I'm saying you know because we have seen uh, the movie times they have shown it 
the, the shopping, they have done it. The right side ads, they've already shown it. So all they have to do is figure out a way on how they're going to put them all together and show it to you other than the organic results or along with the organic results at least. So this is one other concept I have which can happen. I don't know if you people have noticed it or not. The first three results are ads. Now the fourth one is organic, the fifth one is organic, the sixth one if you see it carefully, it's a paid ad. I don't know if it, this can happen as well. Right? Just a concept, but it's possible if they've done all these things, they can also do a lot of other things. I mean, one of them might be they can escape ads. They can put ads in, in between organic results. Now, it's better to explore, explore all options. As you can see here, you know, the first three results are AdWords results, shopping results to the right hand side, below again AdWords results, and then below that the Google Maps, the local places. How many organic results are you seeing in this actual result page? Only one organic result. Only one. So if you wanted to rank for buy shoes online keyword, how many actually organic results are you fighting for? One. Now, can we survive the future? I think we can, but it's a bit you know, tough because they're actually trying to eliminate the you know, search engine result pages. You, know, you, you can directly go to maps and search for pizza. They are, they're showing you the results along with their addresses and, and, and the location on the map. Just click on that location, they'll also take you there. You know, they'll, they'll drive you, they'll tell you which direction to take. You know? Will voice be the depth of serps? You know, this is what is, is the future, I, I, I think, because Amazon has released Amazon Echo, which is their latest product, which you don't have to type anything. All you have to do is ask a question, and it will answer everything. You know, give it the local business info. If you want sports scores, if you want schedules, if you want you know, the, the temperature, the, the weather, and, and if you want it to play uh, you know, music, it will, it will do it. It's just like a, you know, a virtual assistant. It will do everything for you. Google has already done it. All you have to do is okay, say, OK, Google, and it will do it. You don't even have to type keywords. You just have to say, OK, Google, and ask the question. It will give you the answer. You can see Manchester City over and over because that's what I love. That's what I use my, my, my mobile for. See, here, you know, as you can see in the, in the search, search box, I didn't even type the Google algorithm, actually. I didn't even say that. I just typed a part of it and, and clicked on enter. It understood. If I if I type Google Algo, it means it understood that Google algorithm. And this matters a lot today because Google is one of the leading search engines. 90%, more than 90% of traffic that websites receive are from Google. So matters a lot. We need to give more importance to it. So either you can close your eyes and only do optimize for the organic results or you can figure out a way and open your eyes and also use the other real estates that Google has opened where you can show your business. Yes, I see that these are all shopping ads, but you can see other ads as well. These were, these were the easiest I could find because I had very little time to prepare this presentation. You know, so I, whichever I, I saw, I took it. Yes, there are other niches, niche markets, which are showing the same kinds of ads and results, which are not into shopping. You can use this real estate, but if as a company or as a SEO, you're stuck to only organic results, then you're fighting for a very less space, very, very less space. The 10 results in one page organic search in result pages is, is long gone. They are showing three, six, eight, 14 plus 8, 22 paid results in one page and you're trying to outrank them by, by being in the organic results. We won't even stand a chance. Now, what, I, what we usually do and what I would like you guys to do is look for short tactics, which is, which is the easiest way to you know, uh, be in the eyes of the you know, visitor is if it's paid and it's okay, go there. That's not that's not nothing wrong with that short tactic. 
But the long strategy, be in their mind rather than trying to be in front of them. If the user remembers you, he will come back. He doesn't even need Google. Once he remembers your website name, which is where you need to build authoritative content, which is where you need to build deep linking content, which is where you need to build that authoritative and you know, uh, informative content that visitor can use over and over and over again. The reason why I showed this this image, the image that you 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 know looking in front of you, is this is Marvel's lineup till 2018. It's actually 2020. They have changed it. They have, now it's 2020 actually. You know, 2016 till 2020, they have already lined up a set of movies, all interlinked. Every movie is interlinked with one other. This is deep linking. And every movie has its own value. Every movie has its own hero. Every movie has its own, you know, story, a different story. But all come together. All are interlinked, deeply linked, and each hero shares screen in other movie as well. Which means if you are a Captain America fan, you will also have to watch Doctor Strange because he's also a part of the Doctor Strange world. That, that's how they're deeply linking. They are building a fan base and they are taking one visitor, one user, or one movie goer to a different world, which is another movie. They are introducing their world to all the users, but they are giving equal importance to each entity. I hope you people are understanding what I'm trying to say here, because I, I don't know what uh, you know, uh, questions, if there are any, I haven't yet, I haven't yet got any questions, or I'm looking wrong. Okay, I haven't got any questions. Okay, now, if you really want to create deep content, you need to look at keyword opportunities. You know, Mozcast, you know, I have given the, the URL. You just have to open this and look for opportunities. Let's say you're trying to uh, optimize for a given keyword. If you enter the keyword in, in any of these websites, not only Mozcast, you can go to Moz Keyword Difficulty Tool, these are paid tools. A couple of them are free. The like the now provided is a is a free tool, which actually gives you the not provided information in this website. All you have to do is give your analytics account, and it will figure out a way on by including your you now uh, search engine, the market, and CTR study to click through rate, and it will give you the keyword that they are looking for, or they have searched for. We optimize for one keyword, but the user searches for another. He will search what he understands. Like, I didn't type Google algorithm completely, I just typed Google algo. Because I didn't have that patience, or I didn't even know what is the spelling of, and I knew that, but I'm just giving an example, Google, Google algo. But still, you know, you need to think all those. How are we going to think if, if Google doesn't want to share that information with us? That is where tools come into effect. If we know what keywords the users are actually searching for coming to our website, we can easily understand what type of content and what type of keywords can be used to optimize and create deep linking content. Then, keywordtool.io, this is my favorite. You know, you can not only search for, uh, uh, Google, in Google, you can also search for YouTube, Bing, and App Store. This is one of my favorite tools. The best thing is you can go for Keyword Tool Pro if you have money, which, is, which I really suggest. If you are a business owner, if you are a marketing manager, if you are an SEO manager, team lead, or, or, or Know, linking uh, link builder, content writer, especially content writers. This tool is really essential for them. Now, the most important five vertical search engines, every SEO and every company and every website owner, every blogger, every enthusiast has to optimize for their content. One is image search. Whenever you're writing a content, make sure you are optimizing your images. Everyone knows this. This has been said by Google over and over and over again. But still, you go to a website, pick any image, pick any image I'm saying. You will still see a generic name for that image. Even when there is a complete vertical, a different vertical altogether that Google has released, where they give importance to images, still many SEOs, many webmasters, Many digital marketers, they don't optimize their websites for images. They don't give names. They don't give alt tags. It's very, very important. You need to optimize your images. 
I know it's a lot of work, but still, I know it's a small work. Even I felt the same when, when I was pushed. But once we saw the results, we were blown away. The amount of visual traffic that we were getting from those images was, was really, really different. That's when we understood the alt tags and the image text. The next thing is video search optimization. Most of the uh, companies, they are still looking for content which is written. Visual content is what matters as of today. If our company is doing that, I am personally doing that. I am a, a, a vlogger. The reason why I am doing it is I want to connect with people on a daily basis in, in, in via YouTube. Other than Google, if there is any other search engine which is as big as Google, that's YouTube. I know how to how to optimize for Google, but I don't know how to optimize for YouTube. So I'm learning now. And what is the best way to learn? By doing videos, actually. Now we are doing trick shot videos. We are also doing you know uh, vlogging videos. We are we are trying to understand what keywords will rank better. I'll give you a very easier hint. It's easy to rank in YouTube than in Google. So if you have a YouTube video, if if your website has a YouTube video, if you are a SEO, the first thing, the easiest thing. And the most and a, a little time taking thing is have a YouTube video uploaded to YouTube. I don't say YouTube video, have a video uploaded to YouTube, choose the right keywords, let it index. It indexes laser fast. Really, really fast. Video search optimization is very, very you know, according to me, it's the most important one. Then app search, it's still a work in progress, but yes, that's very very important if your company or if your clients or if your agency is into apps make sure that you're optimizing your apps for them the local businesses I there are businesses you know you just saw the results there but they're not properly optimized they're not getting the amount of traffic that they can get if they optimize for more keywords if they optimize them properly yes Sarvi was one, one example which did you know which took uh, advantage of it but that's because we were there then, shopping search. It's still, you know, shopping search, many people only think that Google Shopping Ads or Google, Google Shopping Search. Yes, there are two other major search engines. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. According to Google itself, more than 35% of transactions actually people searched in Amazon. But only 16% of transactional searches happen in Google, which means more transactional searches are happening on Amazon and eBay than Google. So if you are a you know e-commerce site owner or if you are a SEO who is optimizing for e-commerce, better to search for keywords in Amazon and eBay than in Google because not many people are buying by searching in Google. Many people are directly buying you know by searching in Amazon and on eBay. So if you are trying to optimize for a e-commerce site, my best suggestion, which I actually did and I would still do, these days I don't do it because we already have a team that is that, that can do it and that they are happy to do it. But if I am, if I have to do this keyword research, I will definitely go to Amazon and search for keyword. They also have the related search. They also give you the keyword suggestions. They also give you the related products that others have searched for. Everything that Google does, Amazon does. It's just a name difference in terms of shopping. I, in fact, Amazon gives you a better experience. So if you're optimizing for shopping search, make sure you are doing your keyword research on Amazon and eBay. Yes, I'm, I, I, I'm not denying, I'm not asking you guys to not do keyword research in Google. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say, along with Google, give the same equal importance to eBay and Amazon if it's e-commerce site or a site that is trying to sell physical products. That's all I have for you guys for today. Thank you for listening to me for the last one hour. If you want to know more about uh, information, you can follow me on Facebook, Google, Twitter or LinkedIn. If you have any questions, just follow, you know, ping me on Facebook slash Distal Srikan. That's my page. Twitter is the same uh, user directly search for Distal Srikan. Same Google Plus. I hope I was able to give some information for you guys. It might be confusing a bit. 
yes, it is confusing. When I first had this, it took me a couple of months to figure out what Google was actually trying to do. So in one hour, whatever I try to explain, it might not be easy to understand at one. If you are, then we are very lucky. So try to make use of the information that you have got. I think Digital Vidya is going to send you the link where you can download these uh, slides in, in, in PDF. I think so. So, or you'll be able to watch this webinar again in your own time. Uh, if you have any questions, you people can uh, type in and uh, if I can, I'll try my best to answer them. Thank you so much, Srikha. Yes, I'm here. Um, so yeah. we do have some questions. You can just check in the question panel. Um, if you want, I can read it out for you. We have around three to four questions. <laughs> so um, Chandni is asking, is SEO going to be dead in 2016 or in further years? No, it will never be dead. Yes, the way it, it, it will... Uh, work is different. That's what I try to show in the entire uh, presentation. That mm -hmm. yes, you are still there. It will never, you know, uh, go away. The only thing that will uh, change is how we do it. Previously, we were fighting for only ten organic results. Now we will be optimizing for images. We'll be optimizing for uh, for music. We'll be optimizing for YouTube videos. You know, video, audio, apps, news, recipes, all sorts of optimization is possible now. now if you are only concentrating on ranking for organic results that's where SEO is, is less prominent now I, I think you uh, I hope you understood what I tried to say if not just raise your hand thank you so much um, next question is from Arnab he's asking will quality content be on the only solutions to all SEO issues I don't say quality content is important for only SEO issues. It's important for everything. Don't don't worry about uh, content. No, worry about the user. If I use uh, no, uh, if you have spent your quality one hour time listening to me for the you know in this webinar, which means I need to make sure that I'm giving you some sort of quality information. I I try to hold you for one hour. Fifty seven attendees are here. I uh, no. I was successful in, in engaging uh, 57 people for, for one hour. We started this webinar at 3 p.m. Now it's 4 7. I tried to engage you people for the last 67 minutes. All I'm asking you guys is to hold your visitors for more than three minutes or at least bare minimum one minute. You'll be able to sell whatever you want in the next three or four times they come back to your website. Just make them come back to you. That's what needs to be there. Give them without asking and they'll be happy they'll, they'll be happy to return it back to you it's just you know the barter system you give them quality content they'll get back to you in the form of money be it in the form of product be it in the form of a digital product be it in the form of a service be it in the form of clicking on ad they will still do it they'll be more than happy to do it quality okay thank you so much and for the people who are interested in digital marketing course which we offer, we have a poll. You can just select down your, uh, your option. If you are interested, you can just say yes. Or if you are a participant, you can say you are already registered. And if you have any other questions, everyone, you can just drop an email to us. We'll be happy to answer your questions directly. And thank you so much. Srikant for such a great session. We would love to Thank have you, Divya. Thank you for giving me a chance. Yeah, we would love to have All you. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.